Hello, my name's Steve Miller and I blow things up for a living. Here are a few demonstrations I did for the media. Conventional explosives from old-fashioned gunpowder to modern-day TNT are still a potent force. How do they work? We'll experiment to see which are sensitive to impact, which are sensitive to heat. And the principle behind all chemical explosives is exactly the same. This is black powder, also known as gunpowder, uh, the oldest known explosive, originally invented by the Chinese uh, well over a thousand years ago. And I'm uh, laying it out here in a nice loose heap with no confinement whatsoever. The powder is just heaped in a pile with nothing to contain it. If we need a way to set off the black powder. What I'm going to do is put this delay fuse into the charge, set fire to it, and it will give me time to walk to a safe distance before the charge goes off. The powder simply burns, releasing smoke and hot gases harmlessly. Burning like this is called deflagration as opposed to detonation. What would happen if those gases couldn't escape? Here's the same amount of gunpowder in a cardboard tube. This time, a powerful explosion. The gases had nowhere to go, pressure built up, and... The same would happen, but on a giant scale at Messine. Cool. So, just how powerful is it? We'll detonate four and a half kilos, about nine pounds. At Messine, each individual mine was as large as 90,000 pounds. Once the charge is primed, only the expert and a remote camera are allowed to be this close. The minimum safe distance for this explosion, 1,000 feet away. The firing circuit must be checked, and then... Stand by for firing! Firing! Now! Debris is thrown a hundred feet into the air and takes a little while to come down. So how much damage will our own miniature mine have caused? This is the effect of just four and a half kilos. The charges during the First World War were 10,000 times bigger than this. The British hoped that this, magnified thousands of times, would wipe out an entire German army. The cocktail of explosives that were on board the Mont Blanc may seem quite horrendous to the layman. However, explosives need to be insensitive, otherwise you can't transport them around. And if you can't transport them around, you can't use them. What does happen when high explosive TNT, exactly the same as on Mont Blanc, is subjected to massive impact? In this experiment, we'll find out. This is half a kilogram of TNT, enough to demolish a house. The Mont Blanc was specially designed as an explosives carrier. Her hold was lined with wood to prevent sparks. We'll also avoid direct contact with the metal weight. The weight is more than 400 pounds. It'll be released by a small explosive charge, cutting the rope. Dropped from a height of 10 metres, the weight will strike with the crushing force of 6,000 tonnes. A tiny remote camera will capture the moment of impact, if it survives. Bearing now! The weight crashes down, but the TNT... 
is just turned to dust. It's reacted exactly as it was designed to do. You have primary high explosives, which are very easy to set off, and secondaries, which are difficult. TNT is a secondary high explosive. You can drop a considerable weight onto it, and it still won't go off. The reason you want to have secondary high explosives is that you don't want an explosive that goes off by accident when you don't want it to. Just like on that morning at Halifax, Mont Blanc survived the impact, but a tragic chain of events had begun. But with the fire on board now an inferno, why didn't she explode? Another experiment will provide the answer. We'll create a fierce blaze using kerosene as the fuel. And here's another half kilo of raw TNT, like the 200 tonnes on board Mont Blanc. This time, the TNT is about to be cooked. For safety reasons, a remote detonator will ignite the fire. But will the heat of the fire set off the explosive? After three minutes, it's an inferno. But you can see the TNT, one of the most powerful of modern explosives, simply burning. TNT, like other secondary explosives, requires a very heavy shock wave in order to set it off. You need a detonator which gives it a really hard smack. When it's put in a fire, there's no shock wave produced, so it will not go off. The thousands of tonnes of raw explosives en Mont Blanc might just have burnt out harmlessly like this. There might have been no disaster, but for a final and fatal piece of the jigsaw.